What if your country was turned into a nightmare overnight? This was the reality for Uganda under the rule of Idi Amin. Imagine a nation, vibrant and culturally rich, filled with hardworking and peace-loving people. Suddenly, this nation is plunged into an abyss of fear, uncertainty, and widespread chaos. This was Uganda in the early 1970s when Idi Amin, a name that would soon become a synonym for terror, assumed control. Idi Amin, a military man of imposing figure and charismatic personality, to power in a bloodless military coup, ousting the then-president, Obote. Little did the people know, this was the beginning of a reign marked by bloodshed and terror, one that would leave an indelible mark on the history of Uganda. Life as they knew it was upended drastically. The air was heavy with fear Amin's erratic decisions and unpredictable nature kept the entire nation on edge. The once bustling markets were now overshadowed by an eerie silence, laughter and chatter replaced by hushed whispers and furtive glances. The freedom they once enjoyed was now a distant memory, replaced by a crippling fear of the unknown. In the dead of the night, people would disappear, never to be seen or heard from again, as if the grim reaper himself was walking the streets of Uganda, hand in hand with the dreaded State Research Bureau, Amin's secret police. Gory reports of public atrocities and alleged cannibalism surfaced, fanning the flames of fear even more. Every institution meant to protect the people became an instrument of oppression. Every sector of the country crumbled under Amin's rule. The economy was in ruins, education was ignored, and basic human rights were trampled upon. The once prosperous nation was now a mere shadow of its former self, trapped in the iron grip of a ruthless dictator. After eight years of terror, Amin's reign eventually came to an end, but not before leaving a trail of destruction behind. He fled to Libya and later to Saudi Arabia where he lived until his death in 2003, escaping justice for his heinous crimes. IDI Amin's reign was more than just a period of political unrest, it was a reign of terror, a time of unimaginable horror that held an entire nation. This was a time of terror, a time when Uganda was under the iron fist of IDI Amin. Who was this man who brought such terror to his own people? Let us delve into the life of IDI Amin. Born into a poor family in a small Ugandan village, Idi Amin Dada's early life was marked by hardship. His mother was a herbalist and his father, absent for most of his life. With little formal education, Amin found a place for himself in the British colonial army, the King's African Rifles, in the late 1940s. His imposing physique and natural leadership skills quickly caught the attention of his superiors. Amin climbed the military ranks, becoming one of the first two Ugandans to be commissioned as an officer by the British. He was known for his charisma, his brutality, and his unusual methods of command. Stories of his cruelty began to circulate but his military prowess was undeniable. As the 60s rolled in, Uganda gained independence from British rule. Amin, now a significant figure in the military, became entangled in political power struggles. He was accused of misappropriation of military funds, which caused a rift between him and the then-president, Obote. In January of 1971, while President Obote was abroad, Amin seized the opportunity to stage a military coup. With the support of the military, he ousted the government and declared himself president. This marked a dramatic shift in Uganda's political landscape. Amin promised a return to the traditional tribal structure and an end to corruption. His populist rhetoric initially won him public support, but the nation would soon witness the true nature of his rule. His reign was characterized by absolute power, enforced through military might. He purged the military of Obote's supporters and filled the ranks with his loyalists. Uganda was now in the hands of a man whose lust for power was insatiable, a man who would stop at nothing to maintain his grip on the nation, a man known for his unpredictable behavior and ruthless actions. Thus began the reign of Idi Amin, a reign that would be marked by blood and terror. A reign of terror, a reign of bloodshed, this was the reality of Amin's rule. In the heart of Africa, under the iron fist of Idi Amin, Uganda was plunged into a dark era of relentless brutality. The reign of Amin was not just marked by his eccentric persona, but by his ruthless, bloodthirsty regime that left an indelible scar on the nation. Amin's rule was a reign of terror, characterized by rampant human rights abuses. Mass murders became the order of the day. It is estimated that up to half a million people were killed during Amin's rule. Men, women and children, none were spared. People lived in constant fear, never knowing if they would be the next victims of Amin's death squads. 
But the bloodshed was not limited to mass murders. Countless Ugandans simply disappeared without a trace, their fates unknown. Families were torn apart, with loved ones vanishing in the night, their absence a silent testament to the horrors of Amin's rule. These forced disappearances, much like the mass murders, were a tool of fear and control, a stark reminder of the absolute power Amin wielded. In addition to the human cost, Amin's reign also led to the economic downfall of Uganda. Mismanagement, corruption and economic policies guided by self-interest rather than national prosperity led to a sharp decline in Uganda's economy. Inflation soared, unemployment increased, and poverty became widespread. The once flourishing nation was reduced to a state of economic ruin. The reign of Amin was not just a reign of terror but a reign of despair. Under his rule Uganda was a nation in the grip of fear, its people subjected to unimaginable atrocities, its economy in shambles. The bright promise of independence, achieved just a decade prior, was replaced with a grim reality of tyranny and oppression. The reign of Amin was a reign of terror, a time of unimaginable suffering for the people of Uganda. Every reign of terror comes to an end. And so did Amin's. As the dark clouds of tyranny began to lift in the late 70s, the winds of change were blowing over Uganda. This was the beginning of the end for the brutal reign of IDI Amin. The fall of Amin did not happen overnight. It was a series of events that led to his downfall. The decisive blow came in the form of an invasion from neighboring Tanzania. The Tanzanian forces, backed by Ugandan exiles, launched an audacious attack on Amin's regime. This was not just a military campaign, it was a fight for freedom, a fight to reclaim the soul of Uganda. Amin's rule, built on fear and violence, began to crumble. His once loyal army was now in disarray, and his grip on power was slipping. The Tanzanian forces, along with the Ugandan rebels, were relentless in their pursuit. They marched towards the capital city Kampala, with a single mission, to overthrow the tyrant. The end finally came in April 1979. The Tanzanian forces along with the Ugandan rebels, took control of Kampala, effectively overthrowing Amin's regime. The tyrant once feared and ruthless, was now on the run. His reign of terror had come to an end. But the story of Amin, did not end there. He managed to escape and found refuge in Saudi Arabia, where he lived in exile until his death in 2003. In the safety of his exile, he was spared the fate of those he had mercilessly persecuted. The reign of Amin came to an end, but the scars of his rule still remain. The memory of Amin's brutal rule is a painful chapter in Uganda's history. The country was left ravaged, its people traumatized, and its development stunted. The fall of the tyrant marked a new beginning for Uganda, but it also served as a stark reminder of the horrors that unchecked power and brutality can unleash. The reign of Amin ended, but his legacy lives on. In the aftermath of Amin's rule, Uganda was left in ruins, a ghost of its former self. The social fabric of the nation was torn apart, the economy was in shambles, and the people were left traumatized. The Ugandan society, once vibrant and diverse, was now a hollow shell, haunted by the specter of the atrocities committed during Amin's reign. The impact on Uganda and its people was profound. The scars of Amin's brutal rule ran deep, not only physically but psychologically. An entire generation grew up under the shadow of fear, their childhoods marred by violence and oppression. The echoes of their screams still reverberate in the hearts of the Ugandan people, a chilling reminder of the horrors they endured. The long-term effects of Amin's dictatorship were devastating. The nation's infrastructure was decimated, its resources depleted and its reputation on the global stage tarnished. Even decades after his rule, Uganda grappled with the task of rebuilding itself a task made all the more daunting by the magnitude of the destruction wrought by Amin. Yet, amidst the rubble, the spirit of the Ugandan people remained unbroken. They rallied together, their resilience shining through the darkest of times. They began the arduous journey of recovery, working tirelessly to rebuild their nation from the ground up. Little by little they healed, their strength and determination a testament to their indomitable spirit. However, the legacy of Amin's rule is not one of despair, but of hope. It serves as a stark reminder of the perils of unchecked power, and the devastating consequences of tyranny. It is a cautionary tale, a lesson learned the hard way, that the price of freedom, is eternal vigilance. IDI Amin, a name that will forever be remembered as a symbol of terror and tyranny, left a lasting impact on Uganda and its people. His reign may have ended, but his legacy lives on.